Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I want to be president. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The Hidden, which came out in 1987 from director Jack Shoulder. Ian, will you give us the synopsis for The Hidden? Well, the story follows Michael Nori playing Detective Beck. Beck works in the Los Angeles Police Department and he's having to deal with a bunch of murders that have been happening recently, seemingly by innocent people. He's gifted Agent Gallagher, played by Carl McLaughlin, and the two of them go to set out to find the killer. But this killer might be otherworldly. I'd recognise the name of this director, uh, Jack Shoulder, mm. and I soon realised that he was the director for A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, yeah. Freddy's <laughs> Revenge. I was like, yeah. okay, great. One of the good ones. And he also directed Wishmaster 2. And mm, I was like, well, mm, you know, so the first fun. one was fun. The yeah. second one, you know, was mm. okay. Yeah. Uh, but he also directed one of my favourite TV movies, 1201. Oh, yeah, Which is the Groundhog Day repeating murder yeah. mystery type film. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so from this director, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of quite happy going into this film. Because this is a film I'd never even seen or heard of. Really? Despite it being a sci-fi action movie from the 80s. Like... How did I miss this one? This is one of those classic 80s sci-fi horror movies. I remember seeing the poster a lot in my local video store. You've got the, I think, the body lying on the floor and this red bean coming out of it. And it's just lying there. It's just the hidden. You know, I'd seen trailers before uh, watching other films. And it was just like, remember this actor from the hidden. And remember this scene from the hidden. I'm like... Fuck, I've got to see The Hidden, you know? Everybody's talking about it. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? And I had never actually got the chance to watch it until recently. So we're talking 1987, and I'm watching it in 2018. I won't lie, I was slightly disappointed. Oh, really? The I've, film starts off so well I, with, the, yeah. with the bank robbery. Yes, it was It was so good. It, it made me think of Grand Theft Auto V, actually. The whole <laughs> bank robbery, the car chases, the shootout. I mean, the opening is is crazy. It felt like a video game when he exactly. kept getting shot everywhere exactly. and carrying on like his health bar wasn't even going down. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> but, but after that, I mean, the, the film took a turn for the worse for me because I don't think... It knew how to deliver the message that it was going with. Oh, it did. It told me right at the start that this was going to be action and comedy. <laughs> like, he, I mean, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, I didn't laugh straight away, but there's a sequence when he goes through the park and you see this woman <laughs> pushing a man in the wheelchair. Yeah. She screams and runs and he gets it with that Ferrari. Right, yeah. Said, exactly. fine. And I was like, okay. So that but, that happened. Exactly. But then straight after that, there are two guys, you know, whistling, minding their own <laughs> business, walking across the street with a pane of glass. A what could possibly glass. go wrong? But that that pane of glass being smashed by him walking right through it just sets you up that this is a comedy film. And it did right, that right at the beginning it, of this Exactly. One. And that, I think, is my major problem with it because nobody had ever told me for the last 20 odd years that this classic sci fi movie from the 80s was a comedy. What? You didn't get it? I didn't get it until I sat down and watched it. I mean, I mean, I had never got to watch it, so seeing the poster, it didn't say comedy on it. Did nobody else think it was funny? The whole rest of the film is funny. Well, I think from when it was released, you know, if you'd, if we'd watched it back in the day, we wouldn't have seen the comedy. It would have been a lot more action dramatic compared to some comedies that we have seen. I see 80s comedies as killer clowns from fucking outer space. And... Yes, if this film's a comedy, it goes up there with Killer Clowns from Outer Space. But personally, I didn't want it to. I wanted it to be up there with Alien and okay. Aliens. You know, I wanted it to be this fucking scary monster running around the city while the cops are chasing after him. This whole mystery behind who Agent Gallagher is and Carl McLaughlin's character. But it, it the main, the, the, the bank robber is shot and killed and, or seemingly, seemingly killed. And he's taken to the hospital and we see Detective Beck and his partner you know, going through the long list of stuff that this guy has done and why he should die. He killed 12 people, wounded 23 more, stole six cars, most of them Ferraris, robbed eight banks, six supermarkets, four jewelry stores and a candy shop. Six of the ones he killed, he carved up with a butcher knife. Two of them were kids. He did all that in two weeks. If anybody deserves to go that way, sure in the hell was him. While they're out of the room, the, the guy wakes up. Okay, so you so you immediately like, 
oh, why is he awake? How is he awake? He's been shot up. He's been burned. And he walks over to the guy in the next bed and just vomits this thing into Mr. Miller's body. It's like a space slug, but my God, that, that practical effect is yeah, amazing. Yeah, the practical effect is brilliant. It was all done with stop motion as well. It's, it's this next bit that started to get to me because, like I said, we've got Carl McLaughlin. He turns up as Agent Gallagher. And Carl McLaughlin's a really good actor. You know, bouncing off of Michael Norrie. I don't really recognise Michael Norrie from a lot of things, but... I recognise him from Flashdance and The Terminal. But no, he's not really done Flash, that much. Flash dance. I think it... Flash yeah, dance. yeah, yeah. I also list? think it's quite funny that uh, Michael Norrie turned down the role of Riggs in Lethal Weapon to play this role. <laughs> well, Michael yeah. Norrie, you either saved the franchise or, or you know... Destroyed one, but he he he's he's up against Carl McLaughlin, who obviously I recognise from Dune. Yeah, you know, Twin uh, Peaks. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, sitting in a cafe eating pie somewhere. Great actor, but he is robot mode. Yeah, no emotion, no understanding. He reminds me of he he reminds me of Jeff Bridges from Starman. You know, you know, uh, I don't want to say it, but you know, Kevin Spacey from K Pax. I went there. <laughs> so he's walking around and he's just kind of alien. Why would he come in here and kill a guy for a lousy hundred bucks and a, and a, and a radio? Because he likes it. He sees something he wants, he steals it. Something gets in his way, he kills it. And right now he's hiding out in your city. But he's playing the mystery against Beck. He's yeah. not giving Beck any details. You know, we need to find this person. And Beck's just like, well... What the Veers got connected to Mr. Miller? Oh, they work together. <laughs> what, they work together just walking around places, beating the shit out of people and killing people and robbing banks and stealing Ferraris? Yes, because he likes fast cars and he will just take whatever he wants. You know what bothers me about these two guys, DeVries and Miller? Neither has a criminal record. They both had normal lives till a few days ago and now they're killing people. You read minds or was that just a shot in the dark? I read minds. Oh, yeah? What was I just thinking? I don't fully shit. Impressive. Not really. Pretty simple to read. Uh, yeah, at first I was just like, ooh, the dialogue and the scripting <laughs> is so off. <laughs> but then I just found that part of the film's charm. I just started to laugh yeah. at some of the dialogue. Yeah. And it was just yeah. like, I, I, it, it, this is not how FBI agents behave. And like, I'm not sure this is how cops behave. It's like, it just didn't seem like it was written by anyone who would actually been in a police station or... yeah exactly it's like <laughs> oh how much does the fbi pay so you can get this car i don't know i stole it <laughs> so we're just gonna we're just gonna go with that you know gallagher's because a that's thief. probably the truth they, yeah. They, well, yeah it is the truth but it's like beck beck is going up against gallagher but it's like there's no belief there you know, it's the whole cliche of I'm the yeah. cop and you're the FBI big shot that's coming in and telling me how to do my job and I don't <laughs> want you here. But he's not. He's a fucking alien from another planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so then we start coming back to Miller and we're just watching Miller walk around. You he know? has an amazing sequence where he's walking by and he sees a record store. <laughs> yeah. So he goes in and he starts just putting all these tapes in his pocket. He loves rock and roll. It's yeah. an alien that yeah. loves rock and roll. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And so the clerk's just like, hey, wait a minute, you can't be doing that. And uh, he grabs this plastic metal baton. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the alien takes it from him and starts beating him with it. And this is well, just like, oh, guys, 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 please, can you do some better sound effects? Everywhere. Because it does sound like you're being hit with a piece of plastic. And when it when he throws and it lands on the floor and it bounces I was just like that's such a hollow sound I was like there was no beating to that no it, you say better sound effects what about when he goes into the restaurant is making new waves. Richard? Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. you know we we realised that Mr. Miller had been in hospital because he, he needed a gastric bypass and needed a triple heart bypass. So we now know that the alien, or we're not supposed to know it's an alien, is inside a defective body and we'll probably have to change bodies soon at some point. 
And he's just sat there in a restaurant just eating steak, listening to loud rock and roll, and all the patrons are just letting him do it. And he then... He sees on the TV that the, the, the local senator is in town. So the alien gets this mad idea. You, you immediately get it from the scene that the alien's got this mad idea to just take over the senator's body, you know, and aim to be president. Until a fast car shoots by outside. Oh, yeah, and he's just like, I want it. But don't forget, he was farting before. Oh, yeah. Because of the gastric bypass. <laughs> so the, oh, at the same time, we've got Gallagher and Bex running around, you know, catching, being like one step behind Miller. They're coming across the dead bodies that Miller is leaving. And it, like I said, I know it's an alien that they're chasing. But I have to sit through these sequences of the p cops talking and Bex is just not... Get, Bex isn't giving any f information and so Gallagher's not asking until later on in the story when it is obviously part of the plot. You know, they've got to the part of the script. And so you're filling all the action sequences with murders, which is all right. You know, he Miller walks to the, the car showroom. Yeah. And he's like, I want this car. <laughs> it's plain and simple. Yeah. He takes what he wants. So he kills everybody around for and it takes as well. the car. There's a lot of cars in this <laughs> film. There's a lot of Ferraris. There's a Porsche. I think there's Lamborghinis. The chase sequences are really good. You know, when, when, when you just see them driving around and they're just having these mad chase sequences, it's really enjoyable. But I, I think you've already said it. The script and the acting... It's kind of already off-putting that that's what I'm finding. But the thing is, the acting was... was um, It was concise amongst all the actors in the film. Like, none of them seemed out of place within the film that they're in. That is true. That is so, true. Especially when we get to Claudia Christian. Oh, yes. the <laughs> the uh, Of course, you know, he, you see him in the fancy car and he sees two pretty women on the side. Yeah. And they're just like, fuck off. <laughs> so he's just like, all right. So he goes to a strip club. And there's another recognisable face here. We have Jack McGee, who's the bartender, who we just recently saw as the bartender in Breakdown. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. So I'm just going to call him Counter him. Guy for now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so yeah, you got the you got the strippers, you got the dancers, and he's drinking. And, uh, yeah, and we have uh, Claudia Christian, who you'd recognise from Babylon 5. Yeah, Ivanova. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was uh, she was a damn fine woman. And that panty shop with all the money. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So she does her, her little show and then goes backstage. And our alien follows her. Yeah, because at this point, the alien is... You know, really come to terms with he can't stay in Miller's body for very long. And you see that, like, he's at the um, export place and he finds all those guns. And the tentacle shoots out of his arm. Yeah. Now, what was that about? I put it down to the fact that his host body is just rejecting the parasite. Right. Or the parasite just can't continue in this body. Yeah, because because obviously of all the problems it's got. Plus, he was also bleeding constantly. And he taped himself up. Well, yeah, no, he, he was bleeding, yeah, bleeding constantly because that thing shot through his arm and so mm. then I had to cover it. But he, he goes backstage and comes across Brenda the Stripper, as she's called in the uh, credits. And I, I kind of like this acting here, you know, because Claudia Christian was playing the, you know, just go away, I, this is just a job, This is there's no special treats backstage. And I did feel kind of bad when she, she was left alone because I knew what the alien was going to do to her. Yeah. Then when you've got her walking around in this red skirt carrying a bag full of guns, you know, just... she, The alien <laughs> takes this guy to his car because she can't steal the red Ferrari that she'd brought and fucks him to death. Awesome. <laughs> Death, <laughs> death by snoo snoo. <laughs> Why was it awesome, Gary? I mean, we didn't even see anything. It's just kind of you. You're saying you like the audio. This is what we heard. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the fact that later there will, there's a sequence when she sat in the car and yeah. the music's playing and the alien realises, oh, a middle woman's body. I'm just going to fondle my breasts for a little while. <laughs> Naughty alien. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was fun. Anyway, Bex and Gallagher have finally caught up um, at the strip club. At the same time, uh, before we get into the big chase sequence, is it before this or after this that they've they've gone to see his family? Before? I think. Because we hear a little bit more about Agent Gallagher's background. Now, this was something that I found was missing from the story was, we know it's an alien. We know Gallagher's an alien. And... We don't get told any really major backstory apart from this little stuff with his family. Gallagher is taken back to Bex's house for dinner. And you can immediately tell that Gallagher doesn't deal with alcohol very well and doesn't know how to really eat food. So when the family are questioning him about where he's from and why he's chasing this guy, the answers are so vague and alien-like. It's just really hard not to sit there and laugh your ass off at it. Where are you from? Is that north? I've got family up north. You know, where to? I'm just like, he's not from north. He's, he's a fucking alien. You know, his family's been killed. He's, we find out that he's been chasing this thing for nine years. It's killed his partner. It's killed his wife. Killed his daughter. And they, they finally catch up at the strip club find the information about Brenda, and we get another mad-ass, badass car sequence. Watch it. Until they force Brenda's car into the window of a shop. My favourite scene happens here. I was waiting all the way through this film for a good favourite scene that I could say, yeah, this is why you should watch The Hidden. I didn't want to go with the alien sequences or the shooting sequences because there have been better. But this bit was my favourite. I'll cover you. I'd be safer if you didn't. Fine, I won't cover you. All right, cover me. You want me to fucking cover you or not? I need you to cover me. Fine, I'll cover you. Yeah, I, I, I laughed as well. It was like, how long have you been this FBI agent? Clearly not very long if this is the first time you've ever heard somebody say, cover me. But it's, it, this gives Brenda enough time to get out of her car and get into a good position with the bag full of guns she's got to start blasting them. The audio of this part was really bad. Yeah. Because they go into this, they go into this warehouse and the music is playing, but it sounded like there was gunfire. So I thought Brenda was shooting people. A lot of the times the music in this film just felt like somebody was just in a metal shop. Yeah. With two, you know, hammers and just dong, 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 dong. It's like, the, yeah, the music, it just didn't work for me. They, they have this big shootout with Brenda. Bex shoots Brenda a lot of times. They chase her up on top of the roof. And Bex is injured and thrown off the roof. And just before he's killed, Gallagher comes behind and starts shooting Brenda. He shoots her so many times that the body, the, the alien is rejected by the body and has to change. But before Gallagher can bring his strange alien weapon to bear, Brenda throws herself off the roof. She hits the floor 
And the lieutenant of the police department turns up with his dog. <laughs> the dog immediately jumps out the car, runs straight for Brenda's body because, I don't know, he smells the alien. And while nobody is looking, it's taken over by the alien. And then is taken home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, Gallagher and, and Beck know that something's up. He knows that the alien's gone, but he's just like, he doesn't know where it is. He's basically got to start all over again. But the killings start up soon after anyway, so. Well, but, yeah, but we get this, now we get this kind of lull where the dog is being taken home and it's about to take over the chief lieutenant's body to get into the police station. Bex arrests Gallagher, his, his partner Willis, played by... Ed o. Ross, who I recognise from films like Red Heat mm -hmm. and, and Lethal Weapon, um, he, they arrest Gallagher and they go to question him. So Gallagher displays it all out on the table. You know, it's an alien creature that I've been hunting for nine years after it killed my partner and my wife and child. <laughs> and Bex is like, I don't believe you. <laughs> Stays in that body until the body is so damaged it has to find another body. That's the only time I can kill it when it's between bodies. I missed my chance when it came out of the stripper. It found another body in chains before I got there. I'm like, after everything you've seen. Hey, yeah, like, for fuck's sake, Beck. <laughs> seriously. You don't realize it's an alien? The dog realizes it's a fucking alien. <laughs> I, did, did you recognize the actual, uh, the, the chief chief uh, commander of the police station? Yeah, it was Glue Gulliger from Feast. And, and, and Return of the Living Dead. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. And then that, that guy's in lots of things. It's when he introduces Carol Miller to the alien. And you might recognise her as the psychic. I think it's from, is it Insidious or Sinister? The, the yeah, Insidious? it's Lynn Shea. He was, you know, she was the school teacher in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the same woman from Kingpin? Uh, <laughs> you know, she's in so <laughs> many horror movies. It's She's a fantastic sort yeah. of actress. And she has a tiny role in this film, but I was like, I still know your yeah, face. I'm like, I know you. There's still one more face that's going to pop up yes. later as well. <laughs> when I saw this on the credit sequence, before I started the film, I'm like... Gary's going to be on this like a beast. Yep. <laughs> and that's what I think sets the film to 11 for you. Is this one fucking <laughs> right. bit. The lieutenant comes into the police station um, to, to find Gallagher and kill him. And Beck is obviously trying to investigate Gallagher at the same time. The weapons have been given to the evidence department. And one of the technicians uses Gallagher's weird alien weapon to blow a hole in the wall. Everybody races to that place and the lieutenant decides to go Terminator on the police station by grabbing himself a, a rocket launcher and a machine gun and handguns and forces Beck to take him to Gallagher. As they're walking into the prison, Danny Trejo makes his appearance and is immediately shot. <laughs> we could take over this place if we wanted. They have nothing here to stop us. Yo, hippie, what kind of dude are you? He has one line, and then he's dead. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, he's where he should be. Yeah. He's in a prison Brilliant. cell. Yeah. Trail. That's where he always is. <laughs> they have this little brief shootout with, with the lieutenant, and, you know, they fucking... He, those bodies can take a lot of damage before they have to really go down. Because he, he takes a... He, he goes to blast them with a rocket launcher, but then Beck shoots him in the head. That was a great special effect, I thought. Yeah. Bye. Bex's partner Willis has now been possessed by the alien and Willis has decided to go to the senator to try and take control of him. So Bex and Gallagher race down there and there's then a massive, another big shootout where lots of agents and cops and people get killed and the alien just walks right through without a fucking care in the world. He's, he's not going to die until he possesses the next body and I'm just like, why don't you just shoot it with a rocket launcher? You know, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that that will kill it. Bex is fatally wounded at this point, And Gallagher has to go it all alone to, ch to chase the alien down. But the alien manages to get into the senator's body and they're separated. The ending, I could not fucking believe. The senator wants to become president. I want to be president. And he's going to 
you know, make his run for it. And as we already have established, the alien will kill to get what it wants. So Gallagher walks straight into the place with a flamethrower. I knew that was coming. Yeah, really? I knew really? I knew it was coming because really? there was a scene earlier that just set the it up. Of, oh. the, the cop just turned up and he went, hey, look what I just took off these kids. Huh, it's amazing what they've got out on the streets these days. Yeah, oh, was, and he wanders I, uh, off and I was like, it's, I was like that's, that's the weapon that kills the alien. Yeah, that's no, it. Right instantly. There. Right, right there. And he, he walks in there. <laughs> He fucking guy looking, just walks in again, blasted by everybody. Yeah, all the FBI agents are blasting him and shooting him because they think he's in there to kill the senator. But luckily, as we haven't realised it by this point, he's an alien and won't go down that easy. And he walks in there, fucking blasts the senator with the flamethrower. And then as soon as the alien climbs out of its body looking for a new host, he blasts the alien in front of everybody. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what fucking uh, I mean Bex is in hospital dying and there are no guards on Gallagher's room even though they've just seen him shoot what can only be described as an extraterrestrial slug from the senator's body and he walks straight into Bex's room while his family's not there after they've said their final farewells and uses the last of his alien energy to possess Bex's body and take over him well, Bex what? had died, so... Right, so that's fucking bullshit. Basically, the alien wants his family back, so decides to take Bex's. Well, in a way, yeah, but it was really a selfless act in order to to stop the family from feeling the loss of their loved one, so he kind of reanimates him. <laughs> yeah, but he's <laughs> not their loved it's yeah uh, it's, you have the whole sequence earlier when when Gallagher's there with the daughter and the daughter's just like oh you're an alien you yeah know, without can, saying anything I, yeah I can tell I, there's a and sense. in the hospital sequence she's the same again she's reluctant to go near him she's like no I can tell you're not my dad you're the alien yeah but even she's just like well I'll take alien dad over normal dad <laughs> I don't know we haven't seen the hidden two yet so we don't know how that turns out no no. Yeah. Michael Norrie has an appearance in it. He's not the main star, but I don't know if I want to yeah. see the second one. This one's such a self-contained little forgotten <laughs> gem of a film. Yeah. You know? I got quite a few favourite and memorable sequences from the film. You know? Uh, Claudia Christensen playing with her boobs in the car. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, Machete getting killed in the prison cells. Yeah. The musical clerk getting beaten to death. Uh, the glass window smashing, uh, you know, the g- gun-toting stripper, you know, Claudia Christian with all those guns. The big shootout the big are shootout. pretty fucking cool. Um, the police shootout, you know, yeah. The, all those sequences, all memorable, all great. And just, yeah, the interplay between Gallagher and Beck, you know. It's, uh, even though the script wasn't there, their performances just hammed it up. Uh, it worked. <sighs> yeah. I, I've got one favorite scene I, I, I already said it is that cover me scene you know the the film i i walked into the film with one thought of what it was going to be because of what i'd heard in the, uh, you know in the past and the posters i'd seen and the way it, the film had been advertised to me i expected it one way it it went a completely different way and i didn't like it basically i mean the interplay between the two cops i'd rather watch alien nation you know um chasing something around a fucking city before it kills everybody i'd rather watch Terminator, you know there there are some better eighties movies than The Hidden, and I I know I'm probably gonna get slated for that because people are gonna be like, The Hidden's amazing. You should have watched it back in the day. I should have, but I didn't, and I'm sorry. I was watching better films. Man, when I was watching this, I didn't actually realize it was an eighties movie. I thought it was a movie from the late seventies. Really? That's yeah. how bad. Really? That's how honestly. Bad. Yeah, I thought. Well, it's not because of how bad it was. It was only when the special effects turned up. I was like, "Wow, that's really good for the late 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, it's the late eighties." Like, oh, yeah, how yeah. off was I? Yeah, there's just, 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 just not enough. I said this before we started recording. There's, no, there's not enough story for the alien. You know where. We're, we see the alien, we know Carl McLaughlin's an alien, we, we, we know everything's going to be like that, but there's not enough backstory of where it's been and where it's coming from and what, it, what it's done. You know, kind of, the, it's one of our problems with the thing. You know, we love the thing, but we need that backstory to give it more flesh. 
it's happening in this and we get the little bits from Carl McLaughlin where he's just like I'm from the north and I don't drink very well and I'm going to steal your family now Bex because I need one of my own I'm just like <laughs> ah, I just, just go Did home you not think that uh, his alien species was different to the alien species that was the the alien he was hunting in the I, film I thought it was and then I actually looked it up and realised there are two different they're, they're the same species but two different types right yeah, yeah. it makes sense because obviously his body the, the one he's chasing has to keep host job jumping yeah. every so often I don't know whether it's because his body was falling apart. Yeah, it's it's it only host it only host jumps uh, when the body takes too much damage, and it the I, from what I read, the alien species they 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 go two different ways. One goes really evil and loves pleasure, pain, and all that kind of sensational stuff. So that's why it does all the nasty things it does. And the energy based ones are kind of like a higher life form of its kind. It doesn't need that thing, so that's but why it's kind at of the same time that that species. Yeah. Like Gallagher's managed to possess a corpse, whereas the other alien needs to jump into fresh bodies because otherwise, if they no, die, no, it can't keep cause, keep them going. Because Bex hadn't died. Well, he did die. He flatlined. Yeah. No. He. Yeah, well, he flatlined as fucking. Oh yeah. No, he did flatline just before. Did well. He, yeah. He, he was, was dead for like, for like two seconds, I suppose. He was still. He still had to wait until he was dead before he could transfer into. Well, he's got like seven minutes till the brain dies. Well. Something like that. Well. So. Yeah, but anyway, it just it's silly. It's it's fun. It's silly. It's over the top. It's it is. I would say it is an eighties gem. But don't expect an alien sci-fi horror movie with tense action sequences and brilliant acting and awesome special effects. It's a comedy. I still think the special effects are very good. For a and comedy, it's, uh, you might recognize the name. Kevin Yeager was the guy who did the special effects. He was the director for Hellraiser 4 Bloodlines. Oh. But of course, you know, he was a special effects guy turned director for yeah. that film. Yeah, yeah. Because this is the guy that designed the Child's Play doll. Nice. Did the Freddy's uh, makeup effects on Nightmare 2, 3 and 4. Yeah. You know, he's got an incredible library of special effects that he's done. The Hidden is no exception. So, yeah, but the major special effects that we see are the shootouts. The shootouts, the blood know. squibs, explosions, and yeah, the alien creature when we do see it, and the stop motion effects of when it's transferring. You know, it's worth watching the film just for some of those special effects sequences. Yeah. It's also worth watching for the interplay, the buddy cop kind of thing, but just on a sci fi B movie grade level. Yeah. yeah. But. You know, there's lots of different cameos of, of different actors from different films that you recognise in this as well. Definitely. So it's always fun to go, ooh, I spot this one and this one and this one. <laughs> I know who they are. The film's not very long. You know, it's an hour, 30, hour, 40 minutes. Yeah. There is a sort of a small lull when they lose the alien and then they have to kind of recoup until the killing start again before the chase is back on. The car chase sequences are really great. The music mm, is probably the weakest point in the film for me. Uh, but it, it was riveting, you know, I, I, I was compel, compelling watching. It was also the fact that I'd never heard, never seen this film, didn't know what I was getting into. It was a complete discovery. And so I, I, I really recommend the film. It's, I, I've never really heard anyone talk about it. So I'm glad to have discovered it and add it to the collection. Nice. Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews. Long road, I have traveled every time through the darkness. I will run. Bye.